A lot of our understanding of the Old Testament is is from what we've been taught from a very literal perspective. A lot of the Old Testament can also be figurative. There's poetry. Um, there's all sorts of things which can have a meaning for us. And obviously, Noah's day, um, the flood uh, is referring to in terms of Jesus being the savior and um, this illustrative of that God came and rescued those who were willing to get in the flood. Now, what we must be careful is we don't take this um, literally as they wrote it, because they were also their understanding with God was not a New Testament understanding of God. It was not a Jesus understanding of God. It was through their own understanding. And they didn't know God in the same way. Um, so they're referring to things um, in a way um, which when we look at it, we see it doesn't line up with the God that Jesus came to reveal. Therefore, our understanding of it is what's wrong, not the fact um, that God was like that. God didn't destroy the world. Now, there are those who would say, yeah, but the world was totally corrupt. There was no genetically pure people other than noah therefore god wiped it well yeah and illustratively of course god wants nothing within our being which is you know doesn't carry the right dna doesn't carry the image that he created us in so our life is being transformed by the renewing of our mind, so that we will come into that correct image so you could see these things figuratively as well as literally now when it comes to questions like this sodom and gomorrah who caused the fire and brimstone well in a sense, who causes earthquakes? God doesn't cause them. Who, ca who causes lots of different things? They are a result, some of it, of naturally the world, the planet being in tension, not being restored, therefore groaning and longing for the restoration and for the sons of God to be revealed. Um, but then you look at what is fire and what is brimstone. Well, fire we know God is a consuming fire. So we tend to think of God destroyed them with fire. Well, fire could also be seen as a purifying fire that would be a, a purification of what Sodom and Gomorrah meant rather than literally two cities. Now, whether two cities were destroyed and some people feel they found Sodom and Gomorrah and their areas of tar pits in the Middle East and all that stuff, Brimstone actually means um, God's presence. It's the word sulfur, brimstone. It's what you find in, in Revela the book of Revelation. And it's theon. Um, and that word from theos, theos being God, presence of God. Um, you know, God's presence is a purifying presence. Um, so these things can be seen in that way. So who caused it? I know God didn't cause it because God is not going to pour down judgment on people in that way. But he does judge that which is in operation against the truth. Um, and therefore, he will bring fire and brimstone onto anything in our lives, which is a hindrance to us exploring and knowing the truth and knowing and experiencing his love. But he's not going to destroy people. He's going to be destroy the obstacles that are in our way. So different ways of looking at it. Ultimately, um, I believe that God is love. God is good. What God intends us to do is know his goodness and his love. And a lot of the Old Testament stories are figurative, but they're often written in an undifferentiated way. That You see, if someone did something and they sowed something bad, then they open themselves up for reaping something bad, not from God as a consequence so who would bring about the consequence well that which would take the accuser who would accuse us and then come to execute that accusation upon us so we sow and we reap the accusation are against us for our sowing so you could say the enemy brought the fire now the undifferentiated view of god was that if something happened god must have done it so the devil did it for god so they didn't differentiate who did it. God must have done it where it could have been the devil issu issuing the consequences of their behavior because he wants to rob, kill and destroy. You know, so Jesus said the enemy comes to rob, kill and destroy. So who would brought fire and brimstone? The enemy brought fire and brimstone. Who brought the flood? Well, you could say the enemy brought the flood. 
or you could say the earth itself reacted to the violence and horror according to genesis 6 so you know there there were violent continually the earth itself washed itself clean you know so there are different ways of viewing it what i do know is that god is love god is good god doesn't kill and punish anybody even though the old testament might say did jesus came to reveal the truth you've heard it said but i'm saying unto you you see me you've seen the father jesus didn't destroy anybody he only wanted to gather them to himself because that's what love does if you enjoy these videos would you please take a moment to like comment and subscribe it really does help thank you very much